Hey Cameron here, welcome back to the Busy Gardener channel. Today we're gonna take a look at something that can be a little bit confusing sometimes and that is pruning gear. Let's get busy. you wonder about as you're walking the aisles of Home Depot or Sears or wherever you get your uh, you know you're looking for pruning gear and that is wondering what kind of pruner should I get you've got all these different kinds of pruners you got one that looks like this and one that looks like this and is that any different than this and does the spring matter um, and then you've got loppers and saws and all of this stuff we're gonna take a minute to try to demystify this I'm gonna show you a few of the things that I use what I use them for and maybe give a couple of examples of how that works out you know, you need the right tool for the job. You can't sit there and use a Phillips head where there's supposed to be a flat head and you can't be using a, a you know, scissors where you need a knife. I mean, you can kind of hack at something, but boy, it's so much easier to have the right tool. We're gonna look at some of those things. The first are what to be called bypass pruning shears. That's like these Felco 8s. These things, when we call them bypass, um, there's a bypass action where the blades pass by each other. And these are really high-end, uh, probably $45, but are gonna last you a long time. Blades are sharpenable and replaceable, and this is kind of the go-to for all of the work that you do out here. Now, I've got a couple of different kinds. Here's a more inexpensive set of uh, Corona shears, which these are fine before I got the Felcos. And both of these are bypassed. They just look a little bit different. You notice that the spring is a little bit different. This has, the Felco has an enclosed spring while the Corona has an open one. Uh, the Corona has this little latch to keep it closed um, versus the Felco which has this little sliding thumb, thumb stop. But both do the, have the essential, the same function. You look, they look really similar. Like they're cousins, like this is the Mexican cousin of this, this one. Bypass pruner, this is my Felco, Felco 8s. And these are kind of the industry standard um, pruner if you're gonna get a nice one these are really high quality steel um, now this is a bypass pruner what happens here is the blade one blade bypasses the other can you see how that's happening so essentially this is like what your household scissors are going to be like a little more robust for being able to do this um, and so bypass pruner is what you want when you're using on live wood tree that you're wanting to keep <laughs> alive um, because it's a very clean cut very surgical unlike the other one it just kind of removes material this one the blades bypass each other creating a very clean slice and so I'll give an example of what that looks like on here From the other angle the blades bypass by each other hey why don't you take a second and subscribe? If you like what's going on in this channel, do that. If you want to get updates, push the bell. If that's not your thing, that's cool too, but I really appreciate it. Bye. Something that you're not going to use as regularly is something called an anvil pruner. And an anvil pruner is a little bit less expensive, a little less precise cutting tool. It's mainly used for cutting dead types of wood. Um, instead of those blades passing by each other like a pair of kitchen shears or scissors in your house, this is essentially a flat piece of metal like an anvil with a blade that comes down on top of it. And that's what this action is here. This is useful for when you don't need very precise or clean cuts, but you're just needing to break down some material. Maybe you've cut a, a bunch of wood and you're just needing to make it smaller to go into your uh, waste bin or something like that. Anvil pruners are a great, great way to preserve your, uh, your bypass shears and are kind of a secondary thing to get, you know, if you're doing a whole lot of volume. These are anvil anvil pruners and anvil pruners are essentially the bottom is just a flat uh, metal deal here and the top is where the blade is and it's going to come down on the material like an anvil the bottom part on an it and this is mainly used for things that are uh, cutting like dead wood or l large amounts of wood it's not going to really matter if the blades get dull because they don't have to be especially true it has a pretty forgiving cutting surface. So on the, in this case, we'll give an example of an anvil pruner coming in. If you look really closely here, how that's gonna cut. It's just gonna come down, push, it, push the blade straight down on top of the other one, and cut it off. So if you're cutting dead material or trying to break this up to throw in your uh, you know, wood pile or whatever it is, anvil pruner is good for that sort of thing. 
these bypass loppers are the, like the big brother to your, your bypass pruning shears, and these are exceptional. Um, these Craftsman ones that I got are um, unique, but they, they operate on the same principle. The blades pass by each other, enabling the, the wood to um, be cleanly split. And this is for your larger cuts. You see how much wider the opening is there. You can get probably inch, inch and a half if you need to in here. Um, something that this Craftsman one has that let's say a standard one doesn't have, you notice that there's just a single hinge here. Whereas the Craftsman one has this interesting um, doohickey down here. What this does is through the power of leverage, it uh, creates more power when you're when you're pulling. I'm not sure exactly how the angles add that, but I found it to be very comfortable, especially when you're way out here. This angle right here, this device here, gives you even more power for when you're cutting through those tough branches. Something like this is totally fine too. Um, if you don't have a uh, one that has that uh, leverage power, or what do they call Compound action, that's what they call it. Compound lever? I don't remember. This is just a regular one. Come out there, you can kind of go and start zapping through some stuff. This Fiskars one is pretty cool. It's got a little rubber stop here. Um, the blades are nice and sharp. Something that this one has, and the reason why I got this, even though I had the compound pruner lopper, is because this has extending poles. So if you, especially once um, I start dealing with my citrus starts growing beyond that point, I'll be, need to be able to reach up there. And sometimes just that extra, you know, eight, 10 inches of height lets you prevent having to go out and get a ladder or some sort of step stool or something like that. So that's kind of a neat little thing on these Fiskars. And this cuts, it says up to an inch and a half. Close up example of loppers being used on larger wood is these loppers have such a big opening. And so that's really helpful for getting larger pieces of wood. Again, these are generally gonna be bypass, uh, just like you saw with the, with the Felcos and with the Coronas, they're bypass. So I'm gonna come in here perpendicular to the wood, get it really, seat it in the, uh, as close as you can. You've got the most power, the most cutting power down here where the blades uh, meet in that edge. And so you wanna take it. There you go, nice clean cut. A thing that you want to keep in mind anytime you're pruning, whether with hand pruners or with loppers, is when you're going to make the cut, you don't want it to be uh, like this, because then you're going to be engaging some of the fibers and, and it's, you might not get a clean cut, it might start tearing the wood. You always want it to come at it perpendicular or very close to perpendicular at an angle, so you're able to cut straight through the fibers on the top of the, of the wood, whatever you're working with. And this is what I use to keep my tools clean. It's a jar of Lysol and water. And um, yeah, just taken after I'm working with trees, especially those that are susceptible to things like blight, like my pear that I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna prune. Um, you wanna make sure you are dipping that in here and that way it kills any of those pathogens. You don't wanna spread those from tree to tree. Certainly don't want them, you know, you don't wanna infect. Imagine that, you get one bad tree and then you infect all your trees because you're not doing the cleaning. Don't do that, disinfect your gear. Take that and dip it in there. Okay, a tool that doesn't get a ton of use up here and yet I have used is this Craftsman saw. It's a little wood saw. It's kind of a pruning saw, do you see it? This has really aggressive teeth. This is really wonderful and the times that I've used it has been for being able to get into those areas where it, you're needing to cut through um, but you don't want to bring a chainsaw that has a spinning blade. Being able to just get in there and have a really aggressive cut and be able to work through something that's bigger than an inch and a half or in a strange um, angle or strange if it's, you know, you've got branches coming out and you need to be able to get in there. Something like this is exactly the right tool for the job for the times that you need it. I don't use it too much, but the times that I've needed it, this has absolutely been the right tool for it. Look at how aggressive those blades are. Unbelievable. Just there to chew pieces out of that wood. And the sharper the blade, the more uh, clean the cut. And that's gonna give the tree a chance to heal well. It's not gonna have all these openings for diseases and bugs to get into. And finally, you might have some sort of little pocket knife that you take out in your, in your orchard with you. Now I'd say that that's not a knife. This is a knife. Um, this is a Morag knife. Uh, knife, you can use really any kind of pocket knife would be fine. And the reason I got orange is because I want it to show up in the orchard when it inevitably falls down on the ground. Um, and the nice thing about something like this, I got a stainless steel knife. It could be out here in the elements a little bit. It's not gonna be going in the house too much. And this is really wonderful for being able to um, cut some of the fruit while you're out here. It's really not gonna be for pruning, but it's, really, it's to be able to cut open and test 
fruit cut open and see what's going on and having this on your hip while you're walking around can be really really helpful when you've got nothing else otherwise you got to use your teeth juice everywhere yeah. Well, I hope this episode of The Busy Gardener has been helpful to you. We looked at a few of the different types of pruning tools and materials that we use up here in the orchard. Um, stuff to be able to cut wood, keep things safe and clean, and um, end up getting some tasty things as a result of it. So whether your orchard has one tree in it or 500 trees, until next time, stay busy. One for you, one for me. Ready? Mm. How's it taste? Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs>